Oh my word. Morning owl. It's very cold outside. Oh, for all I There you go, madam. Morning. Right, today's video, I had a little interaction here, look on Twitter yesterday with a guy just sent me a picture of his shots shape you see one big block and then quite big hooks on those shots he said please can you help me so we're gonna help him today he sent me a swing he's told me he's got time to practice we'll check in again with him hopefully next week should we see if we can calm down that shape a little bit also remember link down below there if you want to subscribe to Auntie Becky's the channel's auntie charity down there if you do that all that swag all this lovely swag they need to subscribe to this channel and they need to donate to the charity sounds like a good plan and there's loads of swag it's a good idea though so should we take a look at today's swing and see if we can sort this overturn out hang on this hat isn't right there we go that's better right today's swing What's so funny with this swing is when he sent me the picture, I kind of already knew where I would go with this. So I asked him to send me a video and another picture to confirm if I was right or wrong. Just from those shapes and how far they seem to be or like the flight they were getting. So what we see from this player is we see setup's fine, hands a little low but decent. But we definitely see club face pointing up to the sky, which obviously he is not controlling this. He's trying to manage this club face the best he can, and he obviously isn't winning. So we need to try and get him managing this club face a little better. He manages it by just getting quite a high hand, also hands much higher than where they start. Look down by the bottom of that bit of thing he's got hanging down on the net, and then we're kind of a quarter of a way, almost halfway into the net. So hands getting higher as he tries to manage the twist that he's putting into that face but he can't manage it so he, he manages it enough to twist it back on target and then he doesn't it blocks and then you get that massive dispersion we need to calm down that dispersion we need to get calm down that curvature and we're going to have an attack at his grip so let's show you his grip so it's predominantly his right hand look if you look at his right hand we see quite a lot of his fingers coming under the club and it sits around the bottom or slightly to the right as he looks down at the, of the golf club so if i put my hand on the club the way he does a bit more to the right what happens is my natural feeling for my hand when i want to hit a shot is for it to try and get back a little bit more on top there's the curve of the face this is why we see the high handle, trying to straighten that out. So the first thing I want you to do is try and feel where your fingers are on the right hand, where they are in relationship to the grip. So I want you to hide them a bit more. So when I get what we call strong grippers, they obviously don't like putting their right hand on top, feels uncomfortable. But what I like to try and do, rather than just getting their right hand on top, because what that tends to cause is that gets them doing it with all the shoulder they tend to like to go this way and then we get in a whole world of hurt with that it's about making sure it's more kind of in here and in here not over here so i say i want you to get the right hand on the club in a way where these two fingers here don't come around the side of the club they're more or so more on top i want them to feel like they're more on the bottom to the side of the club and then when you get your right hand on top you slightly cover them so you start to really barely see them. So at the moment, you're going to really stare at your fingernails of those two fingers on your right hand. I want you not. I want you to see the tops, the tips at the most, as that hand comes over more on top. This is kind of more the feeling of how you would hold a pen. You've got quite a fist right hand grip, which is quite brutal. You'd kind of rip the paper. We want the right hand to be much more kind of feeling like you are holding a delicate instrument. We want that right hand feeling more on top, but not coming from the shoulder, feeling more in the fingers. And to you, and this is always the big problem, it's going to feel weaker. You can see from your swing, you're strong, you're moving, you've got a big, powerful, high bombing draw, but we want to calm that down. So in theory, we might have to make you feel weaker. I don't think you'll lose distance, and I think you'll gain efficiency, but I think you will feel a lot weaker. Now, the best way to do that is actually in places like this. Now, I know Todd plays off six. He plays to a good standard. That place he's hitting, he's told me he's at his home. He's also got a launch monitor for ball, which we'll dial into at some point, but I, I don't need to at this stage from what I've seen. So you can go to your garage and hit balls, and that's great, but I want you to practice it more than that. I want you to be doing five minutes every hour if you can, um, and you can do that at work. Just grab a pen. 
take a golf grip with it. Making sure right hand is more through the fingers and that feeling on top and that it's not coming from the shoulders. Do a few practice swings. Great way of feeling this. No club. Just put your right hand out in front of you. So making sure it's here, you're more here. Left hand behind back, just make a few swings, feeling how that right hand feels in relationship to your under movement and how that wants to turn. Of course, continuous practice. It's like exercise. It's like doing the TPI stuff I do and did and need to do more of. I am gonna do more, Kaylee. I'm sorry, I'm coming back. It's the little and often and it's the making it less abstract and feeling horrible when you then go and hit balls. Because what you'll say when you hit balls, I can't do that. This feels awful. This feels really weak. How do you expect me to hit balls like this? I'm just going to lose everything to the right. As a coach, for as many years as I've coached, I've heard them all before and none of them are true. Um, they are, they feel that way. But the advantages that this can give, if we can crack this, are massive. Now we do have to do another movement when it comes to hitting balls, which we're going to come to in the next part of the video. But just getting that hand to hold things. Pens, GoPro handles, drinks bottles. I don't care what it is, as long as you get used to that feeling and then take it to your net and practice and take it to the course. That's where we win. So you've practiced the grip, it's starting to feel a bit more comfortable, you're hitting shots in your indoor net, you might be losing some to the right, which I don't mind, you just gotta get familiar with that feeling. If you are, if they're going straight, ignore this. If they're not, you're losing a few to the right, which is common. So think about it, you've got a face that wants to be more like here, so you do that at impact. If we've got a grip that delivers a face here, but you still wanna do this, which can happen, that face is gonna send the ball right. The first thing you can do, I'm gonna get myself touching these cabinets, right hand out in front of me, left behind my back and I'm going to turn into an impact and just beyond and feel like it's my tips of my fingers that are touching the cabinet not what you would want more which is the palm so I'm going to feel like my hands are overtaking in turn letting the hands and the club catch up and then overtake now obviously there's shaft like lean in an iron and a wood there wouldn't be so it's a feeling based rather than the physical you will have shaft lean with an iron and you might be a little bit lean with a driver to go in slightly forward, there's more dynamics in there. But the feeling that works for all students is that feeling of letting that club overtake. I say all, a high percentage. Now if you find a little bit of body turn helps with that, hips going, shoulders going, that's great, let that happen. Get the club just on your waist here, and then what I want you to do is just turn again. Feel like you're getting the toe slightly more towards the cabinet than the heel. So in effect, you're overtaking the head to the handle slightly at the bottom. Your temptation would be more to kind of drag the handle through first before the club touches the cabinet. If anyone of great importance is watching this, I didn't touch the cabinets at all. So the right hand's starting to feel more comfortable. If you are losing some out to the right, simply let that club overtake. You can do it with body turn, just hand position, doesn't matter. It's a feeling, it transforms where the ball goes for so many golfers once they've got that grip feeling more comfortable. Let me know if that one helps. Do you reckon we can fix him? Do you reckon we can help him? Go on, hit that comment section up down below. If you don't already, hit the subscribe button. Remember, there's swag to be won if you're subscribed and you hit the link down below and make a donation to Auntie Becky's charity. Hit the thumbs up button while you're down there as well if you're loving the videos. But I reckon you can. We'll check in with him again next week and I will talk between and I'll try and keep you updated on any pictures or anything that he sends me. But I, I, I love this. This is where it can be so cool, isn't it? He literally sends me a tweet. Can we half that dispersion? Then in turn, I wonder if he can take it out onto the course and lower that handicap. That's another bigger, different question. This would be a very good start to helping him get out there and save a few shots uh, with some wild drives turning into a bit more accurate, hopefully. He's just going to have to have a fight with that. The right hand. Lots of golfers have good old scraps with them, and I love those scraps because often I win them. You can persuade them. They just can't persuade themselves because it feels so odd. Post comments down below. As always, remember, sir, -a to be one if you subscribe and you follow that link and give Auntie Becky's charity some loving, any amount, whatever you can afford. It all helps, and it's a great cause. See you all tomorrow.